Thank you, thank you very much. Sorry for uh, this uh, problem. We start uh, with Dr. Victor Hugo. Yes. Uh, why don't we go ahead with Victor? Let's go uh, ahead, Victor. Go me? ahead. Go ahead, Victor. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. I'm going to talk about the uh, vasculature of the spinal cord. Uh, the vasculature of the spinal cord is really amazing and beautiful. This is a posterior aspect of uh, the lumbosacral segment of the spinal cord. We can see uh, some uh, veins uh, and these uh, small arteries. Uh, this is a, a video about uh, dissection of this uh, spinal cord. Here we have the uh, Caudequina. Conus medullaris. Conus medullaris. We can see the veins of the posterior aspect of the spinal cord. This is a, a small vein. This is The posterior aspect, the uh, dorsal roots, and this is uh, the venous drainage of that. So uh, what I am going to talk uh, is about the, this uh, great uh, posterior radiculomedullary artery. Uh, this is very, very interesting uh, uh, artery because uh, it's giving rise to, to the uh, fluid, uh, arterial fluid, to the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord. Uh, was, uh, Albert uh, Adamkevich was the first man to study the, uh, this, uh, the, the vasculature of the spinal cord. Uh, this is a drawing obtained from an original article by Adamkevich published in 1881. Uh, this is a, a showing of arterial vasculature of the, spine, of the spinal cord and the bidirectional flu of blood. So uh, this is a, a picture of my uh, research about uh, these arteries. Uh, this is uh, conus medullaris and uh, dorsal roots of uh, spinal cord. Uh, Adam K. Wicks injected arteries and veins of the spinal cord applying a special method. Here we can see the vertebral arteries and the, and, and the anterior spinal artery coming from these vertebral arteries. Uh, as I told you, this is a drawing of uh, Adam Kevich, an original drawing. And with uh, the technique nowadays, we can make uh, good injections to understand the vasculature of the brain and also the spinal cord. Here we have a um, hypoplastic uh, vertebral artery and the origin of this anterior spinal artery. And uh, spinal cords were, in, were extracted via a longitudinal midline posterior incision from the occiput to the sacrum. Anatomic dissection was performed until reaching the vertebral lamina. Laminectomies were performed from C1 to L5. The spinal nerves were cut with care so as not to lesion the dura. This is a picture of the posterior uh, spinal cord and uh, after the laminectomy from C1 to L5. And then after we resect this uh, spinal cord and uh, here we are, uh, we, we can see the, the fluid of uh, this injection. This is uh, the Adamkiewicz artery. A red natural latex was injected into the Adamkiewicz artery under moderate pressure and close visual inspection <clears throat> to avoid contrast extravasation. The injection was continued until latex filled distal small caliber arterial vessels, including the posterior spinal arteries. Veins were injected with blue natural uh, latex. 
the great anterior radiculo medullary artery. This artery is located in the anterior aspect of the spinal cord, where it took a characteristic hair pain. The preoperative localization of this artery is very important in the surgical transthoracic spine procedures. Here we can see the, this uh, uh, beautiful uh, Adamkevich artery. It's named as great anterior radiculo medullary artery. And this is a close uh, view. And then uh, we have uh, several features of uh, these uh, arteries. This is a left-sided vessel was present in 45 specimens and a right-sided uh, was present in only five specimen, specimens from a 50 uh, spinal cord study. Uh, here we have a, a, a picture about the anterior uh, aspect of this spinal cord. You can see uh, this uh, Adamkevich artery. And uh, in the conus medullaris, this artery is uh, giving rise to three arteries. Uh, one, uh, posterior spinal artery in the right side, in the left side, one in the right side, and a small artery that is running over the ligamentus terminalis. Uh, although variability exists to the overall cali caliber of radiculomedullary arteries, dominant radiculomedullary arteries are present. The most important radiculomedullary artery is the arteria radicularis magna, otherwise known as the artery of Adamkevich. This artery arises in the thoracolumbar region between T8 and L2 in 75% of patients and has a diameter about one millimeter. Uh, here we have uh, uh, the, in, the, in this picture, uh, I, I separated the, the uh, posterior roots in order to see the lateral aspect of this spinal cord. In this close view, we can see the, the posterior spinal artery. And then in here, we have a uh, look the, the size of uh, this uh, great anterior spinal artery, Adamkiewicz artery, and the arteries, uh, the thoracic arteries, uh, they, they are very, very small. And this one is about one millimeter of diameter. The preoperative localization of this artery is very important in the surgical transthoracic spine procedures. The anatomical knowledge gained preoperatively may reduce the risk of post-operative paraplegia. Uh, look at this, this was uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, here we have the cervical segment of the spinal cord, thoracic segment, and here we have the highest level from the origin of Adamkiewicz artery. It was uh, arising from T3. Here we have a, 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 a the thoracic and lumbosacral segment, look the very long uh, trajectory of uh, this uh, artery. Um, uh, here we have an anterior uh, aspect of this uh, spinal cord. And here we have the lowest level of this Adamkiewicz artery arising from left L2. This is uh, the dorsal uh, root uh, in L2 and it's giving rise to this Adamkiewicz artery. This was the lowest level, left L2. And here, this is a close uh, view about this artery. Look at this, this is uh, uh, the, the, the anterior magna artery, El Adamkiewicz artery, and this is uh, uh, the, a branch, of, uh, the, his, na his name is uh, a posterior uh, spinal artery. So this is uh, the features of the artery of Adamkiewicz. Uh, the most common was in T8 and T9 in the left side. Uh, this is uh, uh, an spinal cord with uh, two uh, Adamkiewicz arteries, this one and this one. Uh, here we have a, a very small accessory uh, spinal artery. And the, the, we, we are going to, to, to review the great posterior radiculo medullary artery. Understanding the basic uh, vascular anatomy of the spinal cord is of utmost importance for imaging interpretation and endovascular and surgical management of spinal cord vascular malformations. Advances in diagnostic and therapeutic interventions have led to a need for more detailed and specific understanding of the microvasculature of the spinal cord. 
In particular, attention to the anatomic variation of the smaller caliber circulatory supply to the spinal cord allows tailored management of a specific uh, patient. This is a posterior aspect of this spinal cord, and this is a great posterior vein, posterior, uh, posterior vein. Uh, the existence of this artery uh, has attracted little attention and has been a matter of debate. Uh, various authors postulate such a vessels, uh, Gillian, Lasortes, and Romanes, Jenninger. Others do not mention it or even deny its existence. Uh, according to Jenninger, a large posterior radicular artery is in caudally in about 75%. But as you can see, this was about uh, 70 years ago or 60 years ago. And now uh, I, I, we decided to make uh, this uh, investigation, this research about this artery. And we can see this very, very beautiful, uh, a great posterior radiculo medullary artery. This is uh, the, the, this, this artery. And here we have a, a, a video about uh, uh, this uh, great posterior. Radiculo medullary it's artery. Coming uh, along to the 12th thoracic nerve root in the right side. This artery makes a curve and goes to the posterior lateral aspect of this spinal cord. Then returns to the posterior aspect between. It. Okay, let's go to, to see the, the artery of Adamkiewicz in the spinal cord specimens uh, in a number of 50 was injected with colored uh, latex until the small caliber arterial vessels were filled. Uh, this is a lateral aspect of this uh, spinal cord. This is another uh, small uh, video about uh, this uh, artery, uh, the great posterior radiculo medullary artery. Here we uh, have the posterior <clears throat> spinal artery. Here we have the this posterior the spinal root. artery. The, the anterior the roots artery. This is the and the posterior roots of this spinal cord. Uh, here we have the lateral aspect of this uh, spinal cord Let me show uh, showing the, the very the small the artery. artery behind okay. these uh, posterior roots. Uh, this so is, uh, these are uh, uh, the denticulate uh, ligaments. We don't have a this one and this other. The posterior spinal cord. And in this spinal cord, there was not a great posterior radiculo medullary artery. Instead, there were several radicular arteries. A variable number of uh, radicular arteries originating from, from segmental arteries or homologous vessels make arterial contributions as lateral feeders along the course of the spine, as you can see in this picture. These radicular arteries are of a small but differing cali calibers. Most of these radicular arteries supply nerve roots, the dura or the pial plexus. Only a few of these radicular arteries specifically provide arterial supply to the collateral network of vessels supplying the spinal cord. These vessels are specifically termed radiculo medullary arteries, this one. Let's go to see these, uh, these uh, small radicular arteries in the posterior spinal cord. A great posterior radiculo medullary artery was identified in 72% of spinal cord specimens. Uh, this total included the specimens in which unilateral and bilateral uh, posterior radiculo medullary artery were found, uh, as well as a single case in which uh, three uh, were evident. In 26% of the specimens, a unilateral left-sided great posterior radiculo medullary artery was present. Uh, a unilateral right-sided uh, was present in 22% of the specimens. In 22% of the specimens, bilateral great posterior radiculo medullary arteries were present in 11 from 50. Uh, the great posterior radiculo medullary artery. One specimen demonstrated three right-sided GPRAs. 
this, this, this one. And uh, the distribution of uh, great posterior radiculo medullary arteries based on side and spinal level. Uh, the most frequent origin was in T12 in the left side and in the, in the, in the right side, nine in the T12 also. So, Victor, uh, you have five minutes. Uh, okay, uh, there is no doubt about its existence of this uh, uh, artery. Uh, the thoracic artery was present in 38 spinal cords, 32 in the left side and six in the right side. Uh, this is the thoracic artery uh, coming from the right side in, and in, the in the left side. Uh, they are very small and this is a small thoracic artery. Uh, the, running, the narrowing of the thoracic segment, segment of the spine, uh, anterior spinal artery has an average diameter of 0.33 millimeters. This is the thoracic artery. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, some uh, injections of uh, the posterior uh, spinal uh, venous system. Uh, look at the difference uh, about the filling in the open, in the in this one, uh, it has uh, only uh, some uh, anastomosis between other arteries. But in here, uh, look at the the feeling in this. It has uh, too many uh, anastomosis with uh, other arteries that are coming from the anterior aspect of this uh, spinal uh, cord. Uh, the great spinal anterior vein, uh, uh, the, here we have the great anterior spinal vein in the lumbosacral segment. Uh, they are uh, really beautiful, as you can see in these uh, pictures. Um, the venous system is, uh, was difficult to study for uh, Adam Kevich, for also for us, it's not easy to define uh, a classification of this because of uh, its, uh, its anatomic uh, uh, features. Uh, some of them with uh, some skirts uh, like, uh, like this. Uh, this is the posterior spinal vein, the, the, the about uh, 1.5 millimeters. And these are, these are other pictures. This is not a malformation. This is only an anatomical variation of the, of the spinal cord. The, this is uh, to, to see how the arachnoid is attached to the, to the anterior aspect of the spinal cord. It's very easy to, to dissect. And in the posterior uh, part of the spinal cord, the arachnoid is very attached to the vessels. So here we have uh, another uh, uh, interesting picture about this. And the conclusions, this artery is uh, present in most 72% of individuals. Uh, this uh, 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 investigation was uh, published in the American Journal of Neuroradiology in, in November last year. And here we have a, 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 a nice uh, view of the lateral aspect of, uh, an, of the anastomosis between anterior and posterior aspect of the spinal cord. Thank you very much for this uh, great invitation. It was a pleasure and a honor to be with you. Thank you, uh, Brooke Victor.